Uncover and Elevate is the next evolution of Liberate Your People Pleaser. I'm Brenda Florida, Certified Life Coach, and after coaching hundreds of clients, I am unapologetically clear on this. People pleasing is a symptom with a deeper cause. Being in a toxic relationship or career and feeling trapped has a deeper cause. Avoiding difficult conversations has a deeper cause. Self-sabotage, imposter syndrome, confusion, feeling insecure, all have a deeper cause. In Uncover and Elevate, we are going to look under the hood every week to uncover what the deeper causes are that shape our lives, including the ones that make breaking a pattern, even one we want to break, so hard. Then we will elevate our lives with tools designed to transform those deeper causes and deal with the symptoms. Join me each week as we uncover and elevate our lives. And now, here's this week's episode of Uncover and Elevate. We are going to talk about one of the most popular topics for every client I work with, (laughs) which is guilt. Guilt, that nasty little thing uh, that often keeps us from what is actually best for us, what is in our highest good, what would be in alignment with our truth, however you like to think about that to yourself, whatever words you like to use to describe it, our guilt about something is almost always going to take us away from what our highest good is. Where we have often been taught, especially through religious cultures, that guilt is like to set us straight, you know, to somehow get us back on track. Guilt very rarely, in my experience, actually does that. And here's why. Here's, I promise to tell you my secret about guilt. Usually, guilt is about taking responsibility for someone else. And that is never in our highest good. So we are only ever responsible for ourselves. What I think, say, do, and feel. That's what I'm responsible That's what, for. That's what you're responsible for. That is the your only purpose in life is to be you, (laughs) the most authentic version of you. Because we all know, whether you want to think of it like I do, as each of us is a unique expression of the divine. But if that doesn't resonate, it doesn't matter. What we know scientifically is that there are no two of us that are the same. So you are a unique creation. So it's easy enough to draw the conclusion then that all these unique individuals were created so that we could each express our uniqueness, okay, to be exactly who we are. Now, what happens is during life, often from the minute you're born, There are many things in your family or caretakers, you know, whatever, whoever you grew up with, the geographic culture, you know, you grow up in the town, the city, the, you know, whether you're in the suburbs or inside a city or out in a rural area or what country you live in, you know, all these things that culture geographically that we are born into that impacts us as well as other things like patriarchy, culture, um, capitalism, if you're in a capitalistic country, uh, certainly other forms of government create a culture that influences the way you think or shapes the way you think. Religion shapes the way you think. So all these other things come on and they start telling us what we quote unquote should be what's acceptable, what's valued, what's not valued. Um, You know, you may have been brought up as I was in a culture that condemned homosexuality. 
So I always, I will say I am cisgender. Um, that is true. And straight. And then some days I can have the conversation of, am I really straight? Like I was raised in a culture that was so powerfully against homosexuality that I can't imagine I would have ever even considered it a possibility or something. Um, so we're all encouraged to conform to whatever culture or cultures we're exposed to, okay? And all of that conformity takes us away from the unique expression that we are. And what I have discovered from my own life and particularly in coaching hundreds of people is that almost always when we are feeling guilty, it's because we have done something that some other person or group or culture doesn't agree with. And that's what creates the guilt. I shouldn't have done that because my mom didn't like it. My spouse didn't like it. It hurt my siblings feelings. The people at work didn't like it. You know, the people in my Bible study class didn't like it, whatever. And so we feel guilty because we have not conformed to what other people wanted from us. And that is a thing I would love to wipe from the planet because every moment of guilt that we spend about someone else's feelings is a waste of energy. Your only responsibility is to how you feel and to what you need to do, what you need to say, what you want to think about, where your truth is, what a um, positive, for lack of a better word to use, mindset would be for you. And so by positive, I, I guess let's use the word serving a mindset that serves you instead of limits you, okay? Because it's not necessarily, I don't know, classically positive, right? I could, it could be a no, it could be, I need to leave this, I need to quit this, I need, you know, whatever, that you might not a lump under positive thinking, but it is your truth. And you know, and, and having the mindset of that is what serves you. And so that is what all of our job is, you know, in life. That's what we're here to do is to live out this unique expression of a human being that we are because there's no one else can do it unless you do it. There's no other you but you. And so whatever it is that you need to do, whether it's, um, you know, it's it's not necessarily about uh, a capitalistic mindset of that. What have you made? What are your units of production? You know, how much money have you made? How many hours did you work? Like, what did you do like in a physical, tangible way? It could be that you are the most loving individual on the planet <laughs> and everybody who has a conversation with you loves it and comes out feeling better and you know, you're the best hugger and, you know, like all that. If that's you, then that's what you need to do. And if somebody doesn't like it, that is their problem and nothing for you to feel guilty about. And so I realize that what I just said there might be really challenging to you to embrace. And maybe you're just like, hell no, Brenda, you're totally wrong on this. And that's okay. All right. You can DM me. You can email me from the link in my bio, whatever you want. And I am happy to have that conversation with you unless you just want to be argumentative about it. But um, <laughs> guilt is, is almost always about somebody else or some you know group of people that doesn't, you, you either actually doesn't like what you did, is hurt by what you did, um, and wants you to conform to whatever they want. So for instance, when I left my first husband, he was very hurt by that. I should say when I left 
our relationship or ended our relationship, he actually moved out. But um, without my even asking him to, but uh, it hurt his feelings very much when I said, no, you can't move back in. And yes, we're going to get divorced. So I have a feeling that I'm going to call like, I don't know, I felt bad about that. You know, I didn't love the fact that I was hurting his feelings, but I didn't want to, I intentionally wanted to keep myself from feeling guilty for it because his feelings of being hurt by the end of our marriage were his responsibility, not mine. It could have ended very um, amicably. You know, he could have realized the marriage was basically dead also. And we could have just, you know, agreed to consciously split. The fact that he didn't doesn't make it my fault. I don't need to feel guilty for ending a relationship that was not good for me. I, you know, of course I'm not a robot and this was my high school sweetheart. We were married 16 years. I mean, I, you know, what, whatever word you want to use, I felt bad that he was so hurt and I had to do what I had to do because for me to be me, I couldn't stay married to him. And so I have to own that and be responsible for that. I ended a marriage that my partner didn't want to end but I don't need to feel guilty about it. So I would love to know how that strikes you, how that hits you, um, and go to my next point, which is that is what I've just described, that kind of process is really the best way to stop feeling guilty, to realize, that, wait a minute, the reason why I'm feeling guilty is because I'm taking on a responsibility for someone else's feelings or for how somebody else is thinking or how somebody else is reacting or a group of people are, you know, responding, reacting, feel, feeling. And that is not my job. My only job is to be responsible for me. My job is to be responsible and own how I feel, what I do, what I'm thinking. And, you know, those are not always pure. So I guess if I was gonna say, you know, answer the question of is there appropriate guilt? I would say, yes, it's when I do something that hurts me. When I do something that is harmful to me, or I do something where I get out of my truth, then, you know, feeling bad about that, okay, because I want to own that and look at how I got there, what things triggered me into that, whatever, so I can stop having this habit or pattern that hurts me. But standing in my truth doesn't hurt me. I mean, of course, I was sad my marriage came to an end. I had thought I was going to, you know, grow old and die with that person. So I had feelings of disappointment and sadness and all kinds of things around the end of that marriage, but not guilt because I knew I was doing what I had to do for myself. And so that is really how, in a, in a way, guilt can help facilitate your very, you know, evolution into, you know, the next highest expression of yourself, your next point of growth, is that it can be a great way to spot when you are taking responsibility for somebody else's feelings or for somebody else's actions, they did that because I fill in the blank and then I feel guilty. So as soon as I start to feel guilty about something, and I, and I still do this too sometimes, um, and I feel very similarly about the topic of anxiety. So we could kind of do the same episode and insert the word an anxious or anxiety with guilt because I think anxiety usually happens when we are taking responsibility for someone else or how they feel, whatever, and or we're just future projecting a terrible outcome. So that's a little different. Um, but if we could get in the present moment 
and stop feeling responsible for other people, anxiety will start to subside. We may still have something to do that's very you know, challenging or difficult, whatever words like that, that you want to use that resonate with like doing something hard, but not anxiety producing. So an example of that would be like, if uh, my kids are in disagreement about something, they're all adults. So let's say, you know, somebody shares with me, they're pissed at their brother or whatever, because this, this, and that. And I know that, you know, there's conflict going on between my kids that will create anxiety because I want to get in there and make that better. I want to get in there and fix it, so to speak. But I have no place in what they are thinking and feeling and doing. And so I have to leave them alone to navigate whatever conflict they have going there. Now, I will, you know, maybe give some advice or something if I'm asked. But generally, if I am not asked, um, I, I don't do that unless I'm having a really bad day and, uh, I have to, I want to jump in and try to fix it anyway. I know that they are responsible for what they think, feel, and do. And I am not involved because it's a conflict between two other people. It's not a conflict about me. If it's a conflict about me, then I get engaged. So same thing with guilt. It, it can be like that flag that says, Oh, wait a minute. I'm feeling guilty or in my other example, I'm feeling anxious. I must be in somebody else's sandbox. So for those of you who haven't heard the sandbox metaphor, I haven't talked about it for a while. This is the metaphor I use for this idea of us only having the job of what we think, do, and say and feel. So that's like our sandbox. So I have a right to my sandbox I can decorate it however I want. I can ignore it if I want. I can build sand castles with moats or without or like whatever, because that's me. That's my sandbox. I can create in it. I can invite others over to visit. All those great things to maybe help me build this part on the castle that I can't seem to do by myself, like whatever. All that's great. But then at the end of the day, they go home. It's me and my sandbox and my sandbox is what I create. You know, it's what I think, feel, do, and say. And everybody has their own sandbox. And so whatever you are thinking, feeling, saying, doing, creating, being part of doing, that is your responsibility and not mine. So maybe you asked me to help you with something like every client I have, right? They've asked me to help coach them through their journey. So I'm going to hop in there for the coaching session and help you create more of what is true for you in your sandbox, but then I leave. And while I'm in there, I'm not taking responsibility for what you're doing and creating and thinking and feeling and saying in your sandbox, because that is you. And so if I have a client who whatever, doesn't like something I say, and they're upset, that is their right. They can keep that from me. They can share it with me, you know, whatever they want, because that is their feeling. If they share it with me and I know, then I can look at my part and say, okay, did I overstep? Did I, you know, project something? Did I say something harshly, you know, like whatever, I, I can evaluate my role in it without taking responsibility that they feel what they feel. Because I could have said the very same thing to a different client and they wouldn't have felt that way. So it's not as much about what I said, it's about where the other person was at when they heard it. And so I have to let every person be responsible for how they receive me. So this is why, like, we don't take things personally, why, you know, everybody doesn't love everybody, because we all have different personalities. Remember, we're all unique expressions. And so sometimes we're just not a good fit. And that's okay. You know, my style of coaching isn't going to be ideal for everyone. It's ideal for the people 
that I work with. And that's why I do those 15 minute connection calls before we start to work together, because I can tell in that time whether or not I'm going to be, you know, a good fit for you, you're going to be a good fit for me. Mostly I can tell if you're a good fit for me, um, for my style of coaching. And you're doing the same thing. You're making sure I'm a good fit for you. And I don't have to feel guilty if you decide not to work with me because I, it didn't feel right to you because whatever, like take that on as if I've done something wrong. We're just not a good fit. I'm not going to take responsibility for how you feel. My job is to be me and stay in my sandbox. And so that's how a feeling like guilt or even anxiety, but we'll stay with guilt since that's the topic of today's podcast, can really be an eye opener. It can be a way to cultivate your um, awareness of, oh, wait, I'm feeling guilty about that. Is it really me and something I've done that has hurt me? Or is it that I'm starting to take responsibility for how somebody else is thinking and feeling? And when it's that, then I can say, okay, not my job and do the things I need to do to, you know, sort of talk myself out of that or start working with me and book a session um, or Voxer me and tell me what's going on and I'll help talk you out of it. because that's what the growth process looks like. It's not like we just magically, you know, hear, you hear me say this on the podcast and boom, you don't feel guilty anymore when somebody else's feelings get hurt. It's not that simple. Growth is a lot more intentional and it takes more work than that. And so it takes that being able to say, oh, wait, I got, I'm feeling guilty about this thing that happened the other day. And oh yeah, like, look, I'm over here feeling responsible for how somebody else feels, not my job. Let me get back over in my sandbox and decide if I need to do anything about it. Do I want to initiate a conversation to potentially clarify or clear things up or something like that to check in with the person? Or do I just need to, you know, be in my sandbox and go fix dinner, <laughs> whatever, Um because I don't need to go do anything about it, except remind myself that, oh, this is what happens when I start taking responsibility for somebody else. And that is not my job. So while I may have the feeling of guilt and saying that to myself or having that awareness doesn't make it just immediately go away. Often our feelings do not represent the truth of a situation. And so while I'm never going to argue with you about your feelings, we all feel how we feel when we feel it. We don't really have any control over it, but we don't have to always take them super seriously either because we can have a lot of feelings about things that are actually not true. You know, the person you think is mad at you and then you find out, oh, they're not mad. They were just busy or their phone died or whatever. And that's why they didn't get back to me or you know, you have the feeling of fear, your spouse, your kid, your somebody you care about is late and you feel afraid because you feel like maybe they had a car accident or something. You can feel that way. And those feelings are legit. You're having them. And then when they walk through the door, you realize none of that was true. So our feelings, why we don't argue with them as far as like, am I feeling that or not? Or should I be feeling that? No, no, no. You feel what you feel. But to be able to uh, look at it and say, okay, I feel guilty, but I do not need to because I've grown enough and I'm wise enough to know now that what I'm feeling guilty about is actually not my responsibility. It's somebody else in their sandbox. And so I'm going to just let this guilt feel, feeling pass. I'm going to go distract myself with something positive. Um so that the feeling can dissipate on its own. So I would love to hear what you think about this. Uh, please, again, DM me, email me, whatever. My email's in the um, show notes. I'm Brenda Florida Coach on Instagram. You can DM me there. But guilt is such a big thing to get us off track. It gets us back to accommodating it gets us back into conforming. 
it's really a tool of a system that wants to have control over us. And that while there are a few situations when we've hurt ourselves or we've done something that we actually regret that we might describe as guilt, it's actually a, it's a, a different feeling. It's kind of a different nuance of it, I guess, that is sort of um, clean. Like if I hit my head on a cabinet, that hurts. I have pain. It hurts for a minute. That's clean pain. If I spend the rest of the day telling myself how stupid I was for not noticing the cabinet was open and hitting my head, that's dirty pain. So guilt is kind of the same. There can be this sort of pure form of it that is like, oh yeah, I wish I hadn't done that. And I'm not going to do that again. And that's probably because I've done something to hurt myself. Um, and if I've done something to others that I don't like that I did, whether they're hurt by it or not, if I don't like it, right, then that's back in my sandbox, what I'm doing, thinking, saying, feeling, then that can help me course correct. And that I would consider like clean guilt under this way of describing it. But usually what we're feeling is dirty guilt, which is really a mask for I'm taking responsibility for somebody else. So let me know what you think because this is a powerful way to both uncover and elevate all kinds of dynamics in your life. And if you are interested in working with me or exploring that, and you want to book the 15 minute call, I am taking one-on-one -on -one clients right now. And I would love to chat with you and see, you know, for both of us to see if I am the coach for you. And you can book that from the show notes as well. Or again, go to Instagram, Brenda Florida Coach. All that stuff's in my link in my bio. DM me, I'll send you the link, whatever. I like to make it super easy. And we can explore working together because being able to let loose of the guilt that you feel is a really incredibly powerful way to elevate your life and your relationships and your experiences and all kinds of things. So um, it's a game changer. I am so happy you were with me today and I will look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Uncover and Elevate. Thank you for joining me for this week's episode of Uncover and Elevate. Check out the show notes for tons of great information and resources like if you're interested in being a guest on the podcast so we can uncover and elevate an issue in your life, just complete the form in the show notes. You can follow me on Instagram at Brenda Florida Coach. You can work with me one on one or get additional information about one of my group or private retreats by completing the form in the show notes. And I would love it if you would share this episode on social and tag me. I'd also love for you to post a five star review wherever you get your podcast. It makes such a big difference and will help others find the show. And I'll be incredibly grateful. This is Brenda Florida, Certified Life Coach, and I'll see you in the next episode of Uncover and Elevate.